Welcome back to Educator.com's SAT preparation course. This lesson is on what to read for the SAT. Let's get started. All right, we begin as always with a brief lesson overview. We're going to ask why read? Why is reading important to preparing for the SAT? We're going to look at how to choose books for you to read, uh, a little secret I like to call the rule of three for figuring out if a book is the right book for you. Then we're going to have a list of great books for every interest. So if you like mystery stories or adventure or fantasy or science fiction or humor or romance or realistic fiction, have we got books for you. Uh, we're going to look at one particular book that is a great place to start, even if you have no idea where to start reading for the SAT. Uh, we're going to have a couple of tips if you cannot or will not read in preparation for the test. Yes, there are things you can do that aren't reading. Shh, don't tell. And finally, we're going to talk about something that I like to call the dirty secret of reading. Yes, reading has dirty secrets. Don't believe what your kindergarten teacher told you. There's totally secrets. All right, to begin with, why should you read for the SAT? Well, first of all, reading is the single best way to build your vocabulary. Period. End of talk. Good talk. It is the best way. Best way to build your vocabulary, read lots of words in context. Reading also gives you practice at understanding both the literal meaning of text and what authors are saying kind of between the lines, okay? You're going to have to do this on the passage-based questions in the critical reading section on the SAT. If you're in practice from reading lots of books, you'll be in better shape. Reading gives you a ready supply of examples for the essay. When you write your essays on the SAT, uh, you will have to come up with examples in a hurry to support your point. The more you've read, the more examples you will have in your quiver. Also, reading older books helps you familiarize yourself with the styles and language of previous centuries. Why is this important? Well, on pretty much every SAT there's ever been, there's been at least one passage in the critical reading section that was written either in the early 20th century or sometime in the 19th or even the 18th century or earlier. All of those these and thous, all of that formal language, all of those different sentence constructions, you still have to understand that. Okay? And the more you read in those periods, the more comfortable you are, the faster you'll read, the better you'll understand, and the easier those questions will be. Reading is also, believe it or not, a great way to relax and reduce stress, and preparing for the SAT is more than stressful enough. Now, I know what you're thinking. Reading is very stressful. I have to read for homework. People make me read. Well, this lesson is all about finding books that you will actually like to read, that'll actually be fun. Yes! Test preparation can be fun. I highly recommend it, actually. It's a lot better if it's fun. All right. So the first important thing you need to know about reading for the SAT is how to choose books. Because for the SAT, as long as you're reading something that's sufficiently advanced and kind of helpful, it almost doesn't matter what you read. So to begin with, choose books in areas that interest you. Choose things you think you're going to like. If you hate kissing, don't read romance novels. If you love spaceships, don't check out westerns, OK? It's really basic. Go for the stuff you like or that you think you're going to like. Also, choose books that challenge you. A good book should regularly introduce characters or ideas that make you think. And you should encounter a good vocabulary word at least every couple of pages. Why not more often? Because if you encounter them only occasionally, you're more likely to be able to figure out from the context what they mean. And if you do have to look it up in the dictionary, you're not quite as annoyed because it doesn't happen a lot. Don't choose books that are too hard or ridiculously boring. You won't read them. Honestly, choose books that you know you're going to read, or at least you think you're going to read. Don't choose Moby Dick because you've heard that Moby Dick is what all the smart people read. If you get bored reading Moby Dick, you're going to put it down, and then you're just going to stop reading. That's bad. It's better to read 10 so-so books that you like than one great book that you hate. Also, use Amazon.com or ask a librarian, librarians are awesome, a bookseller or a friend to recommend books based on your interests and what you've liked before. Amazon actually has a really good feature called Recommendations for You. They'll look at books that you've bought or books that you say you own, and they'll recommend new books for you. Honestly, though, there is no better resource than either a librarian, they are experts on all the books ever, they are awesome, or a friend, somebody who knows you and knows your interests. If you have a friend who likes to read, ask them to set you up with a book. All right, sneaky, sneaky secret time. I read actually more books per year than I can count, and it's because I use something called the rule of three. If you're reading something on your own time, something that wasn't assigned for school, you don't have to read it, you must manage your time wisely. You only have so much leisure time. Don't give up on reading too quickly. Don't you know, open a book, go two words, uh, boring, close it. Don't do that, it's rude. But also don't waste all your time on trying to read something that isn't helpful. So. Here's the rule that I use. If a work is short, 
like a short story or an article, give it three pages to pique your interest. If it doesn't have your interest after three pages, chances are it's never going to have your interest. You can put it down and pick something else up. If a work is long, like a novel, give it three chapters or 20 to 30 pages, if it doesn't have chapters, to pique your interest. At a bare minimum, give it three pages, but honestly, I recommend three chapters. If nothing interesting has happened after three chapters, you're in the wrong book, go find another one. If whatever reading hasn't got your attention by then, you have my permission to try something else.